Yeah, so I started off, um, my main mode of creation was um, drawing, just using, using uh, different mediums. Um, I started off as any other formal artist with the charcoal, um, nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, but I always found myself going back to these, these uh, mechanical pencils. Um, I would say that I'm a perfectionist, I mean, we all have different things to art. But with these mechanical pencils, I always found that it was pretty, the easiest way to, um, to get what I was looking for. It's an interesting mm -hmm. Yep. They're pretty inexpensive, but easy to use. Can you tell us a few um, tidbits about your favorite drawing teachers or what you clean? <laughs> yeah, I could. Um, can you expand more on like tidbits? Like exactly like maybe it's... Um, I don't know. I mean, I in, when I was in college, I had one teacher who uh, he would have us do like three minutes paintings and studies, you know, which basically were quick drawings and mm -hmm. things. And uh, he bring his goats. I don't know. Some people, I think, have the gift of inspiring, but then, you know, what inspires one person may not inspire another. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, that's definitely but, um, I don't know. I like stories. I, don't, I can't speak for the rest of these guys. But <laughs> um. <laughs> it might seem boring to you, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, just keeping it in-house with uh, the Italy trip. Um, the the professor that went with us, uh, he's kind of a kooky guy, uh, like I mentioned before, but he's like really outgoing. Um, his his uh, mode is, or his style technique, whatever you want to call it, is the exact opposite of mine. He comes in and he'll take actually like a large Sharpie and he'll take his, his his paper or canvas, whatever he's working on, and just take him about ten minutes, and that'll be that'll be his that'll be his uh, uh, representation of whatever it is that we're drawing. And uh, you know that doesn't mean that he doesn't have appreciation for what I do, but that just gives you kind of an insight to what he what he liked. He's this he's this outgoing. Uh, I keep using the, the term gestural because that's where I learned it from. Uh, my my drawing instructor. It, uh, he is this this character, I guess you could say. He likes to he likes to just put all of his personality into his artwork. Um, and his his main his main way of teaching, I guess, if you're if you're asking, is draw every day. Um, don't take a second off. Don't take um, even if it looks bad. Actually, he says even if it looks bad, especially when it looks bad, is most of the time where you're being successful. Um, and it's, it's funny coming from him because he, you know, like I said, he takes big sharpies and he doesn't really care what it looks like. But um, to him, it's, it's more about the, the, uh, the feeling, the emotion uh, that he likes. So as for crazy professors, he would definitely be uh, new members. It sounds like you make an interesting mix of Yeah, he's taught at Lindenwood for 32 years now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So what's his name? Yeah, what is his name? His name's Glenn. Glenn. His name's Grant Hargate. Hargate? Hargate, yes. He's been with the department for 32 years, I think. Teaching the same class for about 15, I think is what he told me. Um, But yeah, there are, there are some times where, you know, he wants me to get going. Other times where he doesn't really have much of an opinion, just wanting me to get out there and draw pretty much. Which is what which is the advice that he has for all of us, uh, all of us art students. Just getting out and draw.
Italy? I hear the food's good. <laughs> yeah, uh, the food's great over there. Uh, they have the the type of food that, that I like to talk about is uh, they had this dish and they served it with everything, whether it was um, a formal dinner or if it was just a, a casual night out. They served this this uh, type of pasta, which I thought was pretty interesting. It's a, uh, they, I don't remember, it started with a K maybe, and it's a, uh, it's tiny potato balls. Um, they, no key. Yes, no key, no key yeah. yeah. So it would have been, but, uh, you guys are the G actor. Oh, was it the G? Yeah. yeah. No key. You can tell I didn't learn any Italian. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a pasta sauce with uh, with the potatoes. They are good. Yeah. Where in Italy did you go? We started in Milan, uh, taking a bus down to Florence. What was that? Uh, we started in Milan, uh, took a bus down to Florence, uh, from Florence to Venice. And from Venice to Rome, stopping in stopping in places like Secretary and uh, Pisa. I hear Milan's pretty good. It is. Yeah. I got family in Tirocino. Sicily. Sicily. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about Italian. Uh, culture and history is that the Sicilians are not Italian. <laughs> they're just, they're Sicilian. Uh, and the same goes with uh, their cities as well. I mean, the Florentines don't consider themselves associated with the Romans and vice versa. Yeah, they're the Yeah, they are definitely the <laughs> So if you go to, they want to think of learning about studying the food. Uh, as you get closer to different borders in different countries, the food changes to complement that country, even though it's still based in Italian. Yep. Yep. You know, they're all copying yeah. <laughs> They uh, uh, have the Italian, but they, uh, they switch sides and go over to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, an interesting part that I, I uh, heard about the food down there was. Uh, each region has their own speciality, like uh, southern Italy, I guess more about Sicily, was uh, for the olive plants, mm -hmm. and uh, just, it was just pure, uh, purely the, 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 uh, the conditions they had for weather and growing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, northern uh, were more associated with the Parmesan, the cheeses. Did you go in St. Peter's? Uh, yeah, we went to um, we went to a lot of churches, uh, cathedrals. Take your breath away. How many of you know people were there? Uh, there was twenty of us. Um, and yes, the cathedrals did always take my breath away. Um, our last our last few days we spent in Rome, which is where I took these photographs, um, and we got to see the. Uh, We got to see the uh, Sistine Chapel, which was which was simply amazing. Because Michelangelo is definitely one of my favorites. <coughs> yeah, that was really mm -hmm. Take any pictures when you're in Sistine Chapel? <laughs> you're not supposed to, but yeah, I did. Yeah. I was the first one in, and I put my camera on the floor, pressed the timer, so it wouldn't take the uh, flash, and I was supposed to take a flash in there. Right. And I right. took a picture of the scene. <laughs> Beautiful. Very nice. Well, you're on your own floor, you're taking a picture of the scene. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw me. I got up when they first started walking in. Yeah, did you guys have any uh, other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, did you guys have any other questions about uh, just what I'm doing up here? Uh, as you can, as you can kind of see, I'm st I'm still getting in these values. How long does it take you to do a piece 
Um, it really depends on something about that size. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on uh, me in general. Like, I kind of associate it when people ask me that question uh, with athletes. Like, if a runner's not feeling well that day, he won't compete as well. Um, the same goes for whenever you're being a tedious artist like this. Like, like I said, this one took me a, a couple days as opposed to the one to the right, which some might even like yeah. more, uh, only about eight hours. So. Defining some of those sort of oval shaped items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you guys can kind of, I know it's, I know it's kind of hard, for, uh, just being a little bit farther away. But if you notice, I'm actually not drawing straight lines. I'm coming in, and I'm, sit, I'm really just uh, going back and forth, back and forth, not really concerned with uh, too much of the, uh, I'm more concerned with the, uh, the direction. The, 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 key, the key component is the direction that I'm going. Uh, because one, that's how the values are only seen. If you can kind of see down here, um, I, I, I maintain one constant direction going. Uh, It'd be bottom left to the top right there. Um, and then the same goes for every other smaller detail, um, whether it is you know, just a simple crowning or if it's the entire uh, bottom shelf there. I think one of the, the bigger points, too, is um, which you guys probably already know the uh, artist just in general, uh, is to not to get too far ahead of yourself uh, whenever it comes to value, especially when it comes to these photorealistic uh, drawings or paintings. So you're saying you don't get too dark all at once? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, just stay loose, stay um, just keep uh, keep going with it, even if it seems like it's you're not really doing too much at one point. If there was one piece of advice that you could give the artist regarding drawing with ink, what would be the most important piece uh, of advice you'd want to disseminate? So, a piece of advice for artists who are looking uh, to jump into the, the pen and ink world or any, any sort of like permanent medium uh, like ink. Uh, just practice, honestly. Uh, you know, uh, I guess that's a, that's a big term, but um, the way that I did it, which I kind of explained earlier, was coming into it, I didn't really take my time. I I would say that most of my sketches were uh, this very loose, this very uh, generalized um, depiction of whatever it was that I was drawing. So I would come in and, and say if I was drawing this piece right here, I would just be very, um, I wouldn't really care about the minor details like I'm doing right now. Um, my, my biggest points would be getting uh, proportion right, uh, making sure everything was uh, correct on the value scale, and everything else just really doesn't matter. Um, the, what that really helps you out with is f defining the medium, uh, getting comfortable with it, being confident in yourself uh, with the medium, which is probably the most important part. Um, and from then on, you can just you know, if you want to go the uh, the, uh, the more realistic route, it's definitely easier that way, as opposed to just coming in uh, and not not actually trying uh, anything beforehand with with an ink medium. Do you ever sell these? I haven't. Um, these two right now actually belong to the school. 
so I, I couldn't sell them even if I wanted to. Really? Because um, yeah. you did it on a trip? No, uh, it's because I uh, put them on lease with the school. These two are, these even these frames are the school's uh, frames. Oh. They're hanging up in our lunchroom right now, uh, but they said that I could take them down for you guys huh. um, to show. So they keep those? Yeah, uh, I have to return them tomorrow. Um, so it's, mm -hmm. it's like I'm loaning out my own artwork and then I have to ask permission for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, wow. Are they giving you some money on this lease? Is, is that a, is your pen, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. If, if I wanted to say what you've sketched right tonight, if I wanted to go over that with watercolor, would it smear? Uh, is it water resistant? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think uh, I haven't tried uh, putting water on it, but I, I'm pretty sure the the ink would be uh, affected affected by the water probably. Yeah, I think they I think they actually call it medium wash. If I'm not mistaken. Wouldn't you put the wash down first and then go back and put the ink on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would probably be a little bit easier if you were to put the ink, or the, yeah, the ink on first. I did just the opposite. I use uh, India ink and then paint over that with watercolor. Yeah, I'm not really certain. Um, I guess you the India ink wouldn't smear. It, when it dries, it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But can, can we come up and look at what you've done so far, yeah. Zachary? We, we have to be out of here at nine. No, yeah. So it would yeah. be interesting just to see what kind of strokes you've made. Mm -hmm. Any final they words you want to your, uh, sketch. Um, yeah, you guys are more than welcome to uh, come up here and uh, look. Um, I would say that the keynote to, to take from what I've done uh, so far, and then feel free to obviously take a look at the, the phone, um, is the gestural lines. Like, I, I know that it seems like I'm being very precise in, in these lines over here. Um, but it really is. It's a, it's a very, uh, uh, it's, it's a very, yeah, it's not, it's not a very precise, there's, there's not much to it besides now, just going back and forth. Back and now forth. I understand you're going to do a series of these uh, drawings of what you saw in Italy, mm -hmm. and they're going to be on display at uh, the, the first uh, place that they'll be on display is uh, the Oktoberfest in uh, Winsville. If you guys might be familiar um, over there. They're having uh, their first annual like, wine and arts show. And they, they wanted Lindenwood students to come by, so I, I said that I would pop by with these. Well, you're very talented with just that little pen. I can't believe that you do all that with just one pen. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, amazing. So huge round of applause.